Hello everyone and welcome to another Simple Science video. In this video we are going to be looking at the principle of moments. Now following up from our moments of a force video, we know that when a force acts from a distance from a pivot, then there is going to be a rotational effect or a turning effect. But what if we were to counterbalance this turning effect with another force which produces in this case an anti-clockwise moment to counterbalance its clockwise moment and therefore it produces no net moment and we therefore attain a state of rotational equilibrium. So when we are looking at this in a mathematical way then we realize that for an object to attain rotational equilibrium it, the sum of its clockwise moments must be equal to the sum of its anti-clockwise moments. And in this diagram, that is numerically equal to f1 times x1 equals to the f2 times x2. This is needed to for this rod to be in rotational equilibrium. Now, when we look at an example, let's look at the total clockwise moment of uh, the force 4 newtons, and that is 4 newtons times 2 meters which gives you 8 newton meters and if you were to look at the anti-clockwise moments the anti-clockwise moments is equal to 8 newton meters and therefore the sum of the clockwise moments is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments and therefore this object has retained, attained rotational equilibrium and similarly if you were to fit it on a seesaw like beam where the center of mass is right through the center and you place the pivot right on it, maybe it's not the scale, but deal with it. <laughs> well, the total anti-clockwise moment we calculated as, four, uh, two, as fx, and that should give you 4 newtons times 2 meters, that's the force on the left, gives you 8 newton meters, and the total clockwise moment, which is caused by the 2 newton force on the right, which is equal to fx, is equal to 2 newtons times 4 meters, which gives you 8 newton meters. So similarly, the sum of the clockwise moments is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. Therefore, the object has ro attained rotational equilibrium. But the more common example is when you're asked to find what a certain force in the system is. So in this question, they ask if this rod was in rotational equilibrium, find F2. So if this rod is in rotational equilibrium, the rule says that the sum of the anti -clock, the sum of the clockwise moments is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. And that should give you F1, X1 equals to F2, X2. That's just the general formula for one force per moment direction. And two and for the clockwise moments, two meters times six newtons gives us twelve newton meters, which is equal to four meters multiplied by F2. Now we can then calculate F2 to be three newton meters. From 12 divided by 4. Now similar thing looking at a seesaw you might be asked to find F2 and if this rod is in rotation equilibrium we know that the sum of the clockwise moments is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. So therefore F1 X1 is equal to X2 X2 and we can equate 2 F2 is equal to 6 newtons times 3 meters to give us F2 of 9 newtons. Sorry that was not in the right order but if we were to look at now let's, now let's look at the seesaw equilibrium. Now if the rod was in rotational equilibrium, we are going to find F2. And if it is in rotational equilibrium, then the sum of the clockwise moments should be equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. So we can equate it as F1, X1 is equal to F2, X2. Except in this case, X2, uh, sorry, X1 is a little different in that X1 is no longer a, uh, a, a simple 3 meter distance. It's a distance of 3 meters cos 60 because it's the perpendicular distance of the line of action from the pivot. Okay, so that's a little different. Now we can equate 2F2 is equal to 6 newtons times 3 meters times cos 60, which gives us 2F2 of 9 newton meters and therefore an F2 of 4.5 newtons. Now that is the end of the video. Now thank you very much for watching my video.